Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at an evolved version of the old enemy. This one is the Eheim Professional 5E 600T and I've been reliably informed that quite a lot has changed between the Series 4, which I thought was quite awful, to the Series 5. So it'll be very interesting to see how this one is constructed and whether it's actually worth the money which is uh, ooh, quite a purchase price okay so it's recommended for a tank which is between 300 litres and 600 litres and that is 79 to 159 US gallons maximum flow rate is approximately 1850 litres per hour which equates to 490 gallons per hour that's quite a good flow rate that's very good the filtering capacity is described as 8 litres plus 0.6 litres and that 0.6 litres is the pre-filter. So you've got 8 litres to put media into which sounds good. So we're all on positive so far. The power consumption is 10 to 35 watts. So obviously at the lowest flow rate it would only be drawing 10 watts of power. The highest flow rate it would be pulling 35 watts of power. Even that's still not too bad for an 1850 litre per hour pump. The heating element, which is located in the bottom of the filter, is 210 watts. Which immediately makes me think that 210 watts is too small for even a 300 litre tank. Maximum head of the pump is described as 2.6 meters, so that's the maximum it would possibly pump to if you lifted the pipe all the way up, but the recommended head is no more than 180 centimeters, which is six foot. Beyond that, you're getting pretty much nothing coming out, just a dribble, you know. And the dimensions of this thing, which I don't often read out, are 534 millimeters tall 264 millimeters wide by 264 millimeters deep and in inches that's 21 inches by 10.4 inches by 10.4 inches so it's not massive but eight liters of media including the forms split between four so that's two and it should hold quite a lot of media okay Let's bring the filter onto the bench and I shall give you my initial impressions of it. Actually, I should have mentioned the fact that this is Wi-Fi enabled. To me, I don't like things that are Wi-Fi enabled because ultimately they're all going to be telling on you in the future. But if you want to check the status of the filter or get any alerts as to whether it needs cleaning, maintaining or whatever, you know, you can get those on your phone or a tablet or, you know, PC or whatever. As far as the technological side of things go, I'll just read out what it says on the box. The new Professional 5E filter can be controlled using a smartphone, tablet, PC or Mac and can be linked to other devices. The Internet of Things. Individually configurable modes include constant flow, bio mode, pulse mode and manual mode. And the interesting one there to me is the pulse mode because it raises and lowers the output. So it creates almost like a, a pulse and wave effect. And that would be pretty good for some fish, you know, maybe cichlids and so on, African cichlids that we used to live in around the edges of the lake where you do get natural movements backwards and forwards in the water. It'd probably save the need for a, a wave maker if you had it in pulse mode. Um, step by step, increase or decrease the flow rate. The maximum performance of this model far exceeds that of conventional filters which for the most part is true. I think there's not many filters pump more than this. The only ones I can think of are probably the FX4, FX6, uh, and that huge monstrous thing from, from Maidenhead, which I don't think is available now. I can't remember what it was called, something 600. That was a beast, EX600 I think. I think that was about 2,800 liters an hour, which is way more than this. Um, the filter automatically adjusts the pump output to maintain the selected flow rate for the set period, even when the media starts to block. So obviously it has some bypass function on it, perhaps? Alternating flow rates create a natural wave effect in the aquarium, which we mentioned before. 
electronic change between two adjustable flow rates. Uh, that basically just means the pump's got an asynchronous motor. Constant monitoring of maintenance intervals with cleaning instructions automatically sent to the stored email address. That's pretty handy because a lot of people do live on the phones. If you can get updates on your phone, I can see where that would be handy. Uh, it would be useful. Air trapped under the pump head is automatically removed. That's fairly simple. It just involves a little pipe that goes up to the little cavity and it, as the pump is spitting water out it drags the air out and ultimately replaces it with the water. Uh, permanent electronic system monitoring. This starts a program that automatically attempts to eliminate the cause of any errors. So that sounds a little bit like a diagnostic program that would run automatically and let you know what's wrong with the filter. I'm beginning to think this is a little bit like a high-tech car in that if you have too much technology, there's always something that's going to go wrong. So whilst it's nice to have all the sensors and everything to tell you what's wrong, if you didn't have all the fancy stuff, you wouldn't need all the sensors. So that's a double-edged sword. <laughs> the integrated WLAN function can be deactivated after a single configuration. That's basically your wireless local area network. You don't have to rig it up to the Wi-Fi if you don't want to. You can just run it like a conventional filter. So that's good that you've got the option. Okay, so this is the fella here. Big thanks to Neil who sent this to me. Um, he did say that he'd seen my review of the 4 Series version of this. And he took the plunge on this one. So I'm hoping to God that it's better quality than the Series 4. And it's a very nice design. Although straight away I can see, I can see a huge missed opportunity here, um, which I'll explain in a moment. Yeah, it might. Have, it looks okay. Right, let's get into it. Yeah, the fittings look okay. Yeah. And the good thing about Eheim is they produce a nation of spare parts for everything that they've ever made going all the way back to the dawn of time. So if anything does break, you can easily get the replacement parts for them. Oh, I'll just show you the top first. And you'll notice straight away there's no cable coming out of here. That's because there we've got the power supply to the pump. So you can easily take that head away without trailing a cable behind you. That's a nice touch. These corners of these things are damn sharp though. I'm not a fan of them. There we've got the pump head. There we've got the feed in so the water comes in. Uh, well, I'll show you where it goes in a moment. And then on top of here, we've just got the standard in, out, shake it all about. We've got an indicator there for the Wi-Fi. And here we've got a primer button, which has got a hell of a spring on it. That feels good. So that's the head. Then on the bottom, we've got the heater right on the bottom of this unit. And that basically heats the water up as it is flowing around in here and spits it back out. So you don't have to have the heater in the tank. That's a good feature. It seems to work well because they've done that for a while. Here we've got a display, a little digital display on the bottom, which tells us the temperature of the water. So that's all good. Okay, so the water comes in, it goes down this little hole here and actually swills around underneath here and we've got baffles that, you know, help to settle the flow and catch heavy muck. Water then flows up through this pre-filter foam and it goes down here. Just give you a close-up of that, there you go. So it goes down, where are we? There. It goes down there and that is a tube that goes all the way down to the bottom and then it rises up through the trays, comes out of this little flappy one-way valve, and your pump head sits here, draws the water out and spits it back to the tank. Okay, dear God. Look how thin that plastic is there. Joined here and here, here and here. This one has actually got a manufacturing fault in, making that very, very likely to break. Ah! 
Then under that we've got the grid which stops our fine foam floating away. <laughs> got the fine pad which actually takes up the whole of that section which is very strange. It doesn't just sit in the top tray. It's a funny one. Then we've got a media tray followed by another media tray where are we? Followed by another media tray. Followed by our final tray. So that's four trays in there. Jesus. And then in the bottom of there, you'll probably be able to see that we no longer have a solid bottom in here encasing the elements. We've just got the bare elements. So, you know, I don't know, that'll allow the water to heat up quicker, I would imagine, because it'll circulate in direct contact with the heater. But that has certainly been cheaper to produce than the last one. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming that the filter media is still in the box, although the box doesn't feel very heavy. Where the hell's the media? I have to look up on my phone to see if this thing actually comes with media. Bloody wants to. The recommended retail on this is 640 quid. Currently it's being sold for 494.99 and it doesn't come with any media. Hopefully you can see just how thin this plastic is here. The handle is better than it is on the Pro 4 because the Pro 4 just had those awful little thin lugs there which would just snap off. That is th probably the thinnest plastic I have ever seen on any canister filter, let alone a canister filter which costs 500 quid. I know it. And the Eheim fanboys are going to hate me for saying this, but this this has been made even cheaper than the Pro 4 series. Obviously it isn't being sold for anything less. It's being sold for more. But it's got Wi-Fi. Well, Wi-Fi. The most important thing is how much it holds. And that brings me on to something else as well. We've got a lovely design. As you can see, we've got these corner bits, which aren't glued together properly. I'm not sure whether you can see on there, we've got it fixed here. And we've got a gap all the way down there, and then it's fixed again at the bottom. It's the same on all the sides. And these corner bits look nice, but because of the footprint of the filter, and the recessed nature of the actual filter canister, you could have had this canister coming out to the full size of them and increased the capacity of the trays probably by, I don't know, 30% maybe? I don't know who is designing these things now and is Eheim even a German company now? Well apparently it is, it says made in Germany but it's made to, I don't know, mid 90s Chinese standards this is... <sighs> I've got no dog in the fight as far as types of filters go. But when you're paying this much for a filter, you expect a little bit more, especially from a German company, man. God damn it. And I can't believe that manufacturing error in there. That is... Right, as far as the setup goes, you just leave the pre-filter the way it is. And then the bottom, do you know, I started off in a good mood. I started out in a really positive mood because this was the opportunity to, to make a really cracking good quality filter and they messed it up big time. So leave the pre-filter as it is. The bottom tray would have your coarse, medium and fine pads in. And then your three trays above that would have your filter media in. 
I would say swap out the filter media that comes with it, but obviously there's no bloody filter media that comes with it for 500 quid. I'll um, fill the bottom one up with the foams and fine pad and these ones up with filter media and I'll let you know how much it fits in. Okay, so I've managed to fit just over 1.6 kilos of Biohome Ultimate into each of these three upper trays. So that's round about five kilos in total, which is actually more than I thought would fit in here. However, I'll tell you in a moment just how much more you could get into this thing if the main canister part was simply brought out to the full size of the footprint. What a waste, an absolute waste. Remember the water goes down the pipe that's fixed to the side, which is good. That is a definite, genuine improvement over the Pro 4 series, which had it going down some, you know, cock and bull thing on the side of each tray, which was manufactured terribly and didn't fit together, etc, etc. That is good. That is a definite improvement. So it goes down into the bottom, swills around over the heating element, then goes up through this bottom tray, so in there we've got coarse, medium and fine pads which just about fit in because these are very shallow trays just about got that in and then it goes up through three trays of media roughly five kilos of media in total and that media we've used is the Biohome Ultimate One thing I will say is these trays do fit together very very well so that is another positive. I don't want to just keep throwing negatives at you because I did start this video feeling very positive and I want to try and end with some positivity <laughs> if I can. Considering that we've got roughly five kilos of media in here, it would make this particular filter suitable for a tank up to 500 litres if it was a normally stocked tank. Again, if we wanted to achieve a full cycle because we'd normally use one kilo of media per 100 litres for that. If it was a heavily stocked tank, you could say roughly 250 litres. However, because that heater in the filter is only 210 watts, unless you add another heater, the filter itself is only suitable for about 200 litres, so it all gets very confusing. Okay, I'll stick this back. Actually, another thing I do like is the fact that you can see through the sides. So you can see if any of the trays aren't fitting together properly, but then again, if the trays aren't fitting together properly, the head of your pump isn't going to go on properly, so, you know, it's nice, to, it's nice to be able to see through that though, it is, but not absolutely necessary. <laughs> and another positive as well, the trays fit very well into the canister, so there's not going to be any bypass up the sides, they are a nice tight fit. seems to be fitting together nicely. That's yeah, and you can hear from that that the clips are decent quality. They do fit together very well. That could do with a little handle on the top so you can get it out. What could we get in if the walls of this canister were actually brought out to the full size of the filter? Oh, 26, so say sensibly 25. That's going to be a hell of a difference. 26, yeah, say 25. I'm going to have to do some working out here. So each one of these trays is roughly 2 litres capacity. And if we take into account how much bigger the trays could be if, they were ex if the, the main canister body itself was, didn't taper in and just extended out to the full size of this thing, I'll work out how much we could get in here. So at the minute we've got 1.6 kilos in each tray. So 
point two five times point two five times point zero six times one thousand it was three point seven five it's probably going to be nearer three point five uh, by the time we get all the sides taken off so roughly three point five liters so one point six kilos of media divided by two times 3.5 equals 2.8 kilos yeah so it would probably get over a kilo more into each tray if they were just brought out to this full size and this thing wasn't just recessed in that would make a hell of a difference we'll see well even if we rounded it down further 2.5 three lots of that is 7.5 kilos as opposed to five kilos so I mean even a conservative estimate would be that you could get 50% more media into this filter if you just made this canister body the size of the actual footprint of this thing which would cost pennies to do and really the upshot of it is this is absolutely style over substance 50% more media is a hell of a lot a hell of a lot more I'm just absolutely amazed that somebody with Eheim's reputation would just destroy it with a filter like this I mean I haven't even looked at any other reviews online but I mean unless people are being you know, paid, being given one, and say, give us a five star, give us a five star. I cannot see anybody who's actually paying for this appreciating it as far as the construction quality goes. I mean, it doesn't even come with filter media. Even if they put filter media into it, it would at least be something. But you get this delivered and then you've still got to set the bloody thing up yourself with your own filter media at your own cost after spending 500 quid on this and then you've got the tray construction the plastic is so thin you've got that pre-filter tray with a manufacturing fault in one of the bloody handles you've also got another potential problem with the exposed element in the bottom of there if you're in a hard water area or if you're keeping cichlids is that going to fur up like a kettle does and therefore be less effective quite possibly i don't know i've never looked online to see if that happens but I personally would have preferred to see that encased like it has been in previous models. It's, it's like they've just looked at what they've done in the past and thought, you know, we'll try and make it look better, but cost so much less to make. But we'll give people Wi-Fi. You know, so people can look at the phone and check up what the filter's doing instead of just actually looking and seeing if the flow going back to the tank is slowed down and then thinking, you know, I think I need to clean the filter out. It's been a while. And then the cherry on top, as far as complaints go, is the fact that this canister body could have been extended another inch in all directions, increasing the amount of media that this thing will hold by about 50%. I was lost with words with the Series 4, and I was honestly fully expecting at least some of the problems with that to be rectified, and if anything, they've just compounded them, just made them worse. Now, if there's any Eheim fans still watching this from the safe space, I do apologise if you've been offended by whatever I've said, but I can only say what I can see, and I've seen so many filters, literally hundreds of filters over the years, and this is without a doubt the most expensive one and the most disappointing. It may run well, it may filter the water well, but considering how much you pay, and what you're getting for that, there's no way on earth anybody who can think for themselves and is in the right mind would recommend this to anybody. When you've got the likes of a, I don't know, an All Pond Solutions EF2000 filter, which will hold the same amount of media but is about 75 quid. And it's probably made just as well as this. And you notice there's loads of cuts in this video. Um, because I've either been swearing at the camera or I've just been 
looking into space, thinking, how has nobody picked up on that? How has nobody picked up on this? How did nobody in the design process think, tell you what, you know, we've got something, there's this footprint, why don't we just make the canister that big and, you know, we could increase the, the, the actual capacity of how much media it would hold by roughly 50%. I don't know how the designers, builders, haven't thought and fed that back to the higher ropes. It's almost like it's been designed by a committee. Actually, there's a good saying that a donkey is a horse designed by a committee. This is no doubt a filter designed by a committee, and it is a donkey. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and I do apologize to Neil because I've probably crushed his dreams of acquiring the greatest filter, but it just isn't. You know, as I say, it'll function fine, I'm sure, but it could have been so much more and to add a jobby on top of the cherry on top of the pie this plug didn't even come with a plug protector on you've got three metal bits sticking out of here the plug was just placed on top of the filter in the box obviously during transit it's moved around a bit it's slightly marked the top of the filter, but this is a brand new filter. Neil hasn't even had this at his home yet. This was delivered directly from the shop to me to upgrade to send back to him. So when I send it back, obviously it's going to be wrapped in bubble wrap, so that can't happen. How much extra would it have cost Eheim to put a little plastic plug protector on there or just wrap it in a bit of bloody bubble wrap? You know, Oh, yeah. Uh.